Well, good afternoon, everybody. And uh, thank you for attending this afternoon's session. And uh, look, we've got an interesting discussion coming up. And uh, the topic is education beyond COVID. So we're going to discuss how technology has changed the way which we educate in a world that refuses to stand still. And um, look, we've got a very esteemed uh, guest with us here this afternoon, and uh, I'd like to introduce uh, Sherman from RMIT. So uh, thank you for joining the uh, discussion with me this afternoon. And uh, yeah, if you could uh, just uh, introduce yourself and then um, we'll, we'll come back to, to myself, uh, Chris Bradman, for the General Manager of uh, Instructure. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Uh, Sherman Young, I'm the uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor of Education Interim at RMIT University in Melbourne. Great. Okay. Well, um, let's get straight into it. We've got a bit of time here. And we'll, there is some uh, some Q and A as we kind of go through the session. But um, let's just start off. Um, I guess I, I recall Edutech uh, this time last year, and uh, we were we were hoping that would be the only virtual session. But here we are. Uh, here we are again. And um, I think, you know, obviously the COVID has been impacting the university sector for 18 months now. And uh, and given everything that you went through uh, over the last sort of 12 to 18 months, you know, what adjustments do you think are, are required in course development and, and the teaching and learning experience for students as, as you look ahead into what is now the new normal? Yeah, so so it's an interesting question and, and I'll, I'll pick you up on the new normal a bit later, Chris, because I think I think normal is a, a, an interesting choice of word because uh, <laughs> normal has a long way to go, I suspect. Um, I, I, look, we're, we're probably in in a slightly uh, we're in a continuum of change is probably the way I'd like to put it. And, and certainly, as you will be aware, when when COVID first hit, um, was it only 18 months ago, <laughs> 18 months ago? Uh, we all as a sector responded by pushing things and pivoting very quickly online. It was, uh, it was for many universities, uh, almost a, um, an emergency online pivot. Um, and it was effective, but it wasn't perhaps as deliberate, deliberate as it could have been. So that was, that was kind of the early part of the continuum. As we've had to continue through what's been an ongoing pandemic, I think, you know, you alluded it to it in your opening, but, you know, we were all hoping that by you know, August, September last year that we would be out of this. Um, and clearly that wasn't the case. It, it, it became very apparent to people that, you know, that that temporary um, move to online was going to be, have to be two things. One, somewhat more permanent, but two, um, an opportunity to think about what might be longer term uh, the way we, we learn and teach. Um, and a, a reconfiguration, not in everybody's minds, because many, many of us have been thinking about um, how, how learning should progress in the 21st century for quite some time. Um, but for many people, it was like, okay, it's pretty clear that for the immediate future, you know, you're in lockdown in Sydney, I'm in Melbourne, not in lockdown. Chances are in two months time, our positions will be reversed because that's the reality of 2021. In that context, we are gonna be a combination of face-to-face -face and online. And, you know, whether you call it blended learning, hybrid learning, I heard a wonderful term today, integrated learning, whatever you wanna call it, the reality for the immediate future is going to be some form of combination of online and face-to-face -face learning. Um, hopefully taking the very best of the affordances of online with the very best of the opportunities of face-to-face. -face. And then, you know, along that continuum, as we, as we deal with, with the continuing COVID situation along those lines, we can then say, okay, well, what's really working here? And how do we continue to build, develop and grow that blend and evolve it to such an extent that, to again use your phrase, becomes the new normal. So that maybe in, you know, I'm, I'm going to speculate here in 12 months, when we actually do have a new normal, the new normal for learning and teaching won't be the old normal. It'll be something that's gone through a challenge and emerged at the other side as something quite different um, and better. And, and hopefully that's, that's where we're, we're going to get to. And I guess that will just be known as learning. It won't be yeah. hybrid or uh, it will just be the, the kind of the, the way forward. Really. And, and actually, it kind of brings me on to a related question, which is when you look at RMIT specifically, you know, what do you see as some of the highlights and the lowlights of, of the changes that you made during this, uh, this testing time? 
Yeah, look, the the highlights were the our our staff and our and, and academic and teaching colleagues who who really kind of like pivoted really well. Um, and and they did an amazing job under really tricky circumstances. I mean, um, I, I remember very clearly that, you know, we pretty well on a Monday said, OK, this week you're moving online. You can go back into the office on Tuesday to pick up whatever you need and then the campus is shutting down. Uh, and, you know, there were apocryphal stories of people wheeling monitors down Swanston Street, and, you know, to, so that they had something to work with at home. So, you know, it was it was pretty a, a pretty challenging time. I mean, you know, it, it wasn't all that long ago, but it feels like a decade ago. Um, and in those, even in those circumstances, we had we had we had colleagues who did amazing revamps of their offerings, did amazing redesigns, and and really thought about how the um, how learning and teaching could be embraced in in a in an online situation. So so that was a highlight: the 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 capability and capacity of many 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 of our staff to pivot really quickly. The other highlight, which was which was relevant to that, was was um, now, the feedback from students, um, you're, you're probably aware if, if anyone looks at like the quilt data that, you know, the SES scores for Melbourne universities last year were, were, were you know, unremarkable, shall I say. Uh, you know, there's there's lots of lots of arguments around, you know, to what extent the lockdown had an impact, et cetera, et cetera. And those conversations are probably not for now, but they are important conversations. But generally speaking, the, the response from our students um, in our internal surveys and in the learning and teaching component of the quilt surveys expressed a gratitude for the effort. You know, there was a there was a clear sense of we know times are tough. We really appreciate everything that um, teachers have done. Yes, we would have preferred to, you know, be in an engineering lab with heavy machinery or, you know, blowing things up in a chemistry lab or, you know, in a design studio with um, with uh art classes and sculptures or whatever but given that we can't um thank you for doing what you you have um, and so that 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 kind of um feedback from students was was also a high point knowing of course that they were they were in many ways giving us a little bit of a um a pass grade for the circumstances yeah. but irrespective of that it was it was a highlight low lights i think we had um we had some challenges around technology. Um, so, you know, uh, many of our students are located overseas uh, and challenges in, in some countries with, uh, you know, restricted internet access and, and being able to, to support students with their technological solutions uh, in, in a remote way, sometimes with less than optimal time zones, you know, they, they were kind of lowlights. Um, and, you know, we also, we also, probably struck some constraints in our technologies for doing what we wanted to do because they weren't kind of designed for what we wanted to do at scale. Um, yeah. So, um, you know, that, that works kind of emerging and evolving and developing. And, and as I was saying earlier, you know, we hope to emerge at the end of the pandemic uh, with, with better solutions. And I'm, I'm not blaming technologies or technology companies. Don't worry about that, Chris. Um, <laughs> but but just, just, just indicating that, you know, it's a journey um, and, and the, the journey around the technology. And, and I will say there's, there's a professional development component and capability component for, for, for the institution as well. Um, then that was probably the the, the realization uh, that yeah we 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 weren't starting from scratch but there were some areas that probably we thought we were better at from a tech and people perspective than we were and we need to we need to put energy and effort into lifting that yeah and I think there's new challenges uh, as we sit here today 18 months on because I think in those early stages we all had a bit of a almost like a kind of a wartime spirit initially it's yeah. like you know let's sort of uh, do what we can make the best of the situation and I think that that's difficult to maintain over 18 months and I think if you look at it now it's it is about sort of lifting you know we see this in in the kind of society and in, in, in business generally just kind of continually kind of lifting your teams and and, and kind of supporting them I think is 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 ever more key well, in this and 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 you it's it's not just our team but it's also our students you know um mm -hmm. and uh you know I had um I had school coach kids last year in the Melbourne lockdown um year 12 and you know my son was okay 
but certainly if he had to go through another year of, of the sort of learning that he ended up with, he would be incredibly frustrated. And, and I get that. Um, and so, you know, it's incumbent on us as universities to understand that the student journey is a little bit different through COVID. You know, the, the experience, as you say, in the beginning, it was like, it's perhaps innovative, perhaps a bit new. It's like, oh, this is fun. I can like, you know, put cat tears on my Zoom video and, and you know, things like that. And then there's probably the equivalent of the, the stages of grief that you go through. And, and yes. you know, you suspect that having, having been in and out of online and doing online, there are many, many students who um, will be exasperated and frustrated. And I get that. Uh, and, and our job is to uh, focus on engagement, find ways to engage our students um, and and really lift what we can do uh, to ensure that the learning occurs. Yeah, and, and you're right, there's just so many different areas that you've got to think about, in, you know, with, with the students and their whole, like, life cycle throughout their learning. But I think, a, obviously, a key part of that is the assessment and kind of how assessment works. And that's also been a naturally a challenging one. So, you know, I think a lot of institutions have needed to rethink how assessment works in a in a remote learning environment so uh, how did you kind of address that and what would your advice on how to how to uh, address that point yeah so so in many ways it was an opportunity for us um, so RMIT you know we have an aspiration for authentic assessment um, and it's something that that you know we we do really well in pockets but we don't do perhaps well universally and you know prior to COVID we still ran um, I think we we took the showgrounds over for a couple of weeks and had you know mm -hmm. students in these rows of desks writing their exams for a couple of weeks and there's that there's that still that culture of like the good old fashioned end of year exam yes. um, and obviously with social distancing and you know all of all of the uh, the limitations of space density you can't mm -hmm. run those sorts of exams uh, during a pandemic and so we didn't. And what that meant is that we had our, our, our teaching staff were forced to come up with alternative approaches um, and, and think through what assessment really meant and really looked like. And, and some of that was amazing. You know, a lot of really good work to rethink assessment, um, deliver it online, because much of it had to, be, had to happen online, and find ways to ensure that the students met their learning outcomes, almost going back to basics and saying, well, you know, we, we had this habit of assessing people by making them write 3,000 words or doing a multiple choice guess, uh, sorry, multiple choice exam, <laughs> um, or um, whatever the habit was. And, and, you know, it was almost that opportunity to, to, to start with a blank sheet of paper. Sorry, that's a, probably a bad analogy, but start with a blank sheet of paper. <laughs> Uh, and 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 rethink what assessment was. And I totally acknowledge for many it's tough because um, you know the it's it's a it's a whole new mindset about what assessment looks like. So you then you then overlay that with it's hard enough to go through an authentic assessment without the online challenge. You overlay that with okay, how do I deliver those sorts of assessment tasks online? Mm -hmm. um, and and so you know again an amazing amount of work done by colleagues to to get there and, and to do really interesting things and to take assessment to the next level. The challenge now um, for us and probably many other institutions is to convince our colleagues that that wasn't a temporary thing, mm -hmm. and that that what has been achieved is worthwhile, um, valuable, validated, and and you know something that works for students staff in the institution uh, and so there's there's probably some work to work to be done you know as we approach that new normal to to again shift progressively to where authentic assessment should be again taking the best of the online opportunity the best of the face-to-face -face, and finding ways to to deliver assessment in in that new hybrid blended whatever world we look like yeah but, but certainly you know certainly if out of the back of this uh, a new better approach comes through that adversity then that um that that is a that's a great thing so yeah and, and you're right and you know the the, the sudden onset of, of this initially uh caused us to move very quickly but then i think that the length it's gone on and we saw this with with a lot of our clients is that once you'd got over the initial changes that needed to be made and that sort of scrambling to get something that works then it was about the long-term planning of how do you get that right for, for the longer term and, and you know i think that uh probably many of us felt that at the beginning of 2021 we'd sort of all move back into the classroom and the, and the lecture halls and, and that obviously kind of has not been the case so uh, I think that's you know, having those long-term strategies is is key yeah and and look it's it, it's not easy 
you know, um, particularly for big institutions with with lots of students and 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 lots of embedded practices, uh, it's a, it's an ongoing challenge. But it's it's one that, like I said, the uh, uh, the opportunity has arisen to really embrace that challenge uh, and to to find new and, and better ways of doing things. Yeah, and you know, speaking from a canvas perspective, you know, when when things shifted last year, we we initially saw an immediate spike in, in people obviously using. Um, Using the you know the, the canvas environment and um, you know because suddenly suddenly everybody was at home so it wasn't the case of it was something that you'd go into every day to to do something it was something that people were in all the time and I think you know over over a very short space of time we uh, kind of tripled the use utilization of uh, of the okay. canvas platform and I think okay. we had about thirty five million. Um, app downloads as well. So again, showing that it wasn't people were look, consuming the technology in different ways as well. So yeah, I think we, we've certainly seen some some changes there. So okay, well, I think I guess um, really looking at um, you know the learning experiences really that rely on kind of more face to face and hands on engagement. Uh, I'm sort of thinking scientific labs, medical practices. You know, how have you able to be able to address those because that's that's the, the tricky yeah, area it, it is a tricky area and and you know it's it's been a mix of of um solutions mm -hmm. so you know there are some tools and i don't necessarily have to brand name them this isn't the abc is it but you know okay <laughs> but but there are there other are tools, tools are available yes <laughs> there are other tools are available uh which allow simulations of of various activities so you know virtual labs um there are virtual lab tools that i'm sure you're you're aware of that uh mm -hmm. That have been implemented. Um, so there was some of that that was embedded and utilised. Uh, we also had some situation where um, where academics, you know, they they actually in situations where a lab activity might have been more a demonstration than a hands-on lab, they actually went in and and filmed it and you know and and used that as the way to engage students and. Um, I'm, I'm sure we didn't then ask the students to set up chemistry labs in the kitchen or anything, but you know there was that 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 approach of okay, I, I can go in the lab and film this, and then you can you can take the results from this uh, and write it up. So there was that that kind of approach, but um, absolutely some were rescheduled. You know we were we were in a moving feast, and and certainly we had some intensives where um, where subjects where courses took took a, a block of time and said okay, you're going to catch up on all your um, experiences there. Um, and then others actually totally redesigned the experience. Um, you know, I joked about, you know, uh, setting up a chem lab in the kitchen. Uh, I'm sure, I hope that didn't happen, but, you know, things, things did happen that were creative and innovative, you know, in, in some of the design spaces, for example, you know, students were, I, I heard stories of students being sent kind of like packages of resources that they could use um with their with their own facilities at home and you know um and 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 colleagues redesigning the activities and the assessment so that they could be done using what was at hand rather than a resource that was on campus so there was a lot of creative work done particularly in our, our design areas and our, our um, creative areas to to really be able to nurture our students through activities that otherwise would have had to happen on campus. Um, really creative, really innovative, and, and you know, fantastic to see. Um, and, and the students, from what I hear, loved it, you know, really, really appreciated the effort and the engagement. Um, obviously, you know, as we saw from the, the SES data last year, many students would have preferred to be um, on campus doing those things. Reality of pandemic couldn't be, but we did absolutely what we could. Um, in different ways to ensure they got uh, an equivalent experience and 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 met the learning outcomes that, that they needed to. Mm, excellent. And we're just coming up on time here, but I guess I'll just as a final question, let's look into the Sherman Crystal Ball and you know, where do you, <laughs> where do you kind of see things going from here? If you if you in a, in a kind can of a, you, a I, pandemic can I, world, <laughs> can you can I tell you a joke which isn't mine, but I'll claim it for this session that um, you know it's it's very easy to predict the future. It's getting the timing that, uh, that right, that is, oh, I can't even say it. Getting the timing right is the hard bit. And if you get the timing wrong, you're a futurist. And if you get the timing right, you're a billionaire. So um, I'm not a billionaire, so take my prog prognications for, for what they're worth. Um, look, I, I think that where we're going is where we're going. It, it will be a blend. We will be, we will be, uh, probably dramatically reinventing what we do in learning and teaching. I think that's that's 
an outcome of COVID. It's going to be a bit of a bumpy, rocky road to get to where we want to be. But things like the traditional two-hour lecture, forget it, it's done. We're going to find new and interesting ways and looking forward to it. Yes, absolutely. Well, look, thank you for your time today, Sherman. It's great, uh, great conversation, and uh, and you've done some amazing things at uh, at RMIT. And uh, yeah, and let's look forward to twenty twenty two, which we which we'll do this uh, face to face. So uh, yeah, thanks, thanks everyone, and uh, thanks for tuning in. Looking forward to it, Chris. <laughs> Bye.